Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Steve Larson, and you're listening to Sales Funnel Radio. Welcome to Sales Funnel Radio, where you'll learn marketing strategies to grow your online business using today's best internet sales funnels. And now, here's your host, Steve Larson. Hey, how you doing? Uh, you know what's funny is uh, I was listening to um, Russell's stuff, and I actually went through and I, I've been indexing all of his um, uh, his videos and going through and indexing him and saying like, okay, this little clip from this section to this section, and this second to this second is about this, and it's the best version of him teaching it. You know, and then I'll watch more video, and it's kind of on like you know two or three times speed, which in Russell time is like ten x speed. It's so fast. <laughs> when most people do not talk that fast. Um, you know, then. Uh, and you know, I'll index this and index this. And it's been super, super fun. And I just noticed that he starts everybody with, hey, everybody, how's it going? You know, and I was, I don't know why, but the beginning of every one of my podcasts, if you listen to it, was probably like, what's up, everyone? This is Steve Larson. And, you know, it's like, it's the same thing every time. And I'm like, <laughs> I should probably switch that up. <laughs> the other thing, too, is I kind of want to switch up my intro and outro jingle. Like, I like it a lot. I made it by hand, which is awesome. Um, but, uh, man, that would, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm all about variety, <laughs> so I kind of want to switch it up a little bit. But um, hey, you guys, it's been really cool this last few weeks. Um, uh, there's been so much going on. Uh, my brother just got married, which is so cool. I'm the oldest of six kids. Um, I got four, um, uh, three brothers and two sisters, and uh, we're all really close, to be honest. Um, my siblings and I were actually really, really close which is rare and it's cool. We're actually all buddies and friends and, um, you know, we all kind of just cheer each, other, cheer each other on with, with what we're doing. I got a brother who's really into coding. He's very, very good at it. Um, I got a brother who's actually a phlebotomist, um, which is amazing. That's so cool. Uh, my sister actually started working at ClickFunnels, which is awesome. Um, she's still in college. She's actually my assistant. Um, she's the one that goes in and, and does all my podcast stuff. And, and, um, she's really, really enjoyed it. She's actually also getting into e-commerce, which is cool. Um, then I got two young siblings as well, which is super awesome and fun. Obviously, my, my parents, you know, and uh, we we have we have a lot of fun together. I guess the only reason I'm telling you guys that is so that you guys know. Like, so my brothers got married, right? Um, and and um, <laughs> we always go do like these crazy bachelor parties. Always, it's so fun, you know. Like, and I'm Mormon. You guys know that probably, right? Uh, Russell is. Most everyone in the ClickFunnels office there is. <laughs> I don't think that was on purpose. We just. Most of us are, right? So we don't have like the normal, typical bachelor party that you see on Hollywood. Like it's not that way at all where people are like hiring strippers and drinking and stuff like that. Like, it's not like that at all. What my brothers and I do, our tradition now, because the older three boys, uh, we're all married now. And, uh, and uh, you know, I've got, uh, I'm an uncle a couple times now, and, uh, which is awesome. Um, and so what we always do though is we all try and have like man trips, you know, total you know, something that's so ridiculous over the top masculine, you know, something that's just kind of crazy and out there, but only a group of guys with no supervision would do because <laughs> I'm a kid at heart and I will be forever and I don't care. And, uh, so my other brother, when he got married, we're like, dude, what if, what if we made, what if we floated a river and we're like, yeah, that'd be cool. We're like, what if we actually made our own boats? Like, yeah, that'd be cool. What if we made our own boats out of cardboard and floated the Snake River? What? And it was such a, like a, yeah, like total, that's man, <laughs> that's manly, right? And we went, we built this massive fire that had, uh, had food by the fire right next to the river. And while it was all cooking and stuff like that, we literally took uh, like pieces of cardboard and we taped it all together. And, and we got like two of us per cardboard boat and we actually constructed them really really well i actually didn't think that they would do as well as they did the, the problem was that they worked so well and the current was so strong that they actually ended up taking us like a mile down the river before they capsized and we were not planning on going that far we were laughing our faces off getting into them because we were sure they would capsize immediately and it's a deep fast river i, I think it was the snake i'm not sure but regardless, it was a very deep, very fast and big river. And we get in this thing. We're floating down the river. And um, uh, <laughs> it was just – anyway, it was super, super awesome. The water was freezing, freezing. It was like just after winter time. This is like a, you know two years ago actually. And uh, we, they, they start capsizing. It's cardboard. You know, you're in water. 
and there's holes punching through it and all of a sudden we jump out into the river and we swim to the to the shore but what we weren't expecting is how far it actually took us and we didn't bring shoes and there was nothing but thorns and thickets all around us so we spent the next hour and a half gingerly placing each step all the way back to a road where we walked barefoot back all the way and it, it was super fun like yeah to me like there's not enough of that kind of activity in in especially uh men or boys or teenagers anymore um it's not enough masculine anyway personal opinion on that but but man freaking rub your face in some dirt be a man you know what i mean like (laughs) it's okay to be masculine it's okay for women to be feminine you know and uh that's my personal opinion on that i don't know why i told you all that but um so what we did for my other brother's uh bachelor party is we were like okay well we gotta do something crazy like this is some feat of manhood, you know. We once together, we all went. We climbed the Tetons, which is near death experience. We did it in the middle of a blizzard. We didn't really plan that well, but <laughs> it was really fun, like hanging on the side of these rock faces with like a thousand feet drop behind us. Like <laughs> it's slightly stupid, but really fun, right? And uh, <laughs> anyway, so for my brother's bachelor party, the other brother, what we did is we're like, okay. We got to involve fire somehow. There's got to be some food. You know, we'll, we'll hang out a little bit, but like, what are we going to go do that's kind of insane and extreme? And uh, so, what we did is we went out to some sand dunes and we soaked these, ga- these t shirts in gasoline and uh, uh, we tied strings around them and we went at nighttime and lit them on fire and we literally played golf on the sand dunes at night. And we like, we had hula hoops that we were lighting on fire and those were the. Those are the the holes. <laughs> it was super fun, and I was like, oh, "That's awesome! What else can we do that's crazy and extreme?" And uh, this is no joke. Sometimes how I create products for marketing too. By the way, I sit back and Russell and I do this. We'll sit back and go, "What else is like cool? What's so insane that's insane? Makes this offer insatiable, you know?" And we'll add that in. And uh, I guess there's the marketing tie for right now. But <laughs> so what we did though is I was like, "We got to make a flamethrower." Like we're in the middle of the dunes. This is going to be so cool. So we went and we bought the squirt gun that looked like a Gatling gun. And we loaded it with gasoline. And uh, while this thing – and it's super scary because, I mean, if I mean, if that got on us, it was <laughs> – but it was super fun. <laughs> and we pumped this squirt gun up. And we were shooting gas all over the place and lighting on a fire while I was coming out. And it was like – it's anyway, super rambo was super awesome. And, uh, wow, that took seven minutes to tell all that. But anyway, uh, I guess part of the whole point of this is I did write down – like I wanted you guys to know that – you, don't take yourself too serious you know be have fun be fun um no one falls in love with people who are boring you you, you can't be boring okay you got to go do stuff that's awesome and cool um one of the first um let's see it's in russell's new book and i'm probably gonna be referencing that a lot because i've been dying to tell you guys some of the things in it but i haven't been able to i've read it well over five times before it ever launched because i have it <laughs> and I helped make it a little bit and uh, I made the acknowledgments which is super cool and I'm using it to help create some other courses and products that we're going to be pushing out and it's super awesome um, but there are different rules to the attractive character and and the attractive character tells us that uh, number one you're like you cannot be boring you have got to live the life that your audience wishes they could right or you've got to live the life that your audience is is craving for um, and, and, and longs for, okay? That's one of the rules of the attractive character, right? So I, I've been trying to practice that, to be honest. Not that I'd be living in ways that I wouldn't normally, but uh, honestly, I just have fun, and it's super sweet. Uh, you know, we're going off and doing some crazy stuff, and it's been, been a whole lot of fun. Um, uh, <laughs> it's just been fun. I don't even know what to say about it. Um, but anyways, I ended up sitting back, and I was talking to my brother, and he started telling me, he's like, dude, I've been watching some of the things you've been doing, and it's really fun. I actually really want to get into e-commerce, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. But he and I spoke for a solid three hours about this, and I realized when it was over, I had been talking about funnel strategy and cool e-com things, and, and, and the book.com secrets was really the base for the things that he was asking, while the expert secrets book was really how to sell that stuff. And then I was saying, well, and then while you're doing that, you might as well go look at two or three other gurus. Here they are. Here's some sweet names of people who could help you learn e-commerce, you know, and, and anyway, very exciting, super, super awesome stuff. Um, um, but it was just – it was shocking to me because I was sitting back and I was thinking like, that's so funny. I just wish he would come come to the event. Um, Garrett White at the last Funnel Hacking Live event, he said in there, he held up the Dotcom Secrets book and he's like, read this. 
And he's like, then he held up the extra secrets book. He's like, read this. I can't remember the exact words he's saying, but his basic principle was that, you know what's funny is you pay to get in the inner circle and half the stuff is more than half. Almost all of it is actually coming from the two books. He's like, if you guys would just read and apply the things that are in the book, like you'd be done, <laughs> you know, you would, you would make it. And that, that's actually one of the things that we're thinking about making now is kind of a, somewhat of a, a guide to help people get through to the two comic club. Um, um, cause there is a process, there is a way to pull this stuff off, you know, to, to make it so that it doesn't so, it seem so daunting or a step-by-step guide. And that's what everyone's looking for. And it goes a little bit back to that duct tape marketing principle that I was talking about. You know, um, I was listening to my brother and we we're talking back and forth and I was like, yeah, it's so interesting. If you just listen to this, if you just listen to this, if you just do this, and that, those are kind of the thoughts that were going through my head. And I was like, my gosh, you guys, there's so much information that's already out there, but these roadblocks get started in your head because you have not executed at all. Okay, one of the first funnels I ever built was with a software called Get Response. That's right, you heard me right. I used Get Response and WordPress, but those are two different funnels. I actually built a funnel in Get Response. They had this landing page software. And I think they still have it actually. And it was before I ever used ClickFunnels or knew what it was or even knew that it existed. Actually, it may not also have existed yet at that time or they're at least in beta. Um, but what I was doing is, is uh, this MLM hired me to come in and um, start building. Um, they're like, hey, we get most of our sales back in sales by selling these books. When someone buys the book on Amazon, they usually end up going and buying the product that the book talks about. So we push books. And I was like, okay, that's cool. They're like, would you help us build you know, this thing for it? And I was like, yeah, it'd be awesome. And, and at the time, I, I, I pitched Vivint um, about this concept. And they didn't – either I did a bad job explaining it or they just didn't care. I, I think it was more they didn't care. Um, like you guys have door to door salespeople, you could totally replace them and get your own sales for full or without having to pay out any commission. They're like, oh, whatever. And uh, you know, I was like, oh, well. Anyway, it's kind of anyway, whatever. Um, but as we were creating these this this funnel to push books, it totally worked, by the way. And we were pushing books, and and it was really really fun. Um, there was this guy who who would not stop asking the most obvious questions and every little piece that I said to him, he had to question it and it drove me crazy. You guys, ah, oh man, it was, it was nuts. We would have gotten so much more done if I didn't stop, you know, stop validating every single little thing. Like I understand the point and what he was trying to do, but it was like, Hey, let's put a, let's put this button on the right. And we'll make it uh, I don't know, how about a red button? How about red? Why would you do red? Uh, because you know, red converts highly, and and uh, and honestly, it matches the color scheme. So there's two pluses right there, and and uh, let's toss it on the right here. Why would you put it on the right side? How come? How come it's on the right side? And be like, oh my gosh, because usually people's scroll bars are on the right side, and if they're not using a scroll wheel on their mouse, then they're clicking on the side uh, and pulling down, and people's mouse doesn't have to go as far. And we actually find we get better opt-in rates because of that. Okay, okay, sounds good. Cool, and let's put a little snippet under here that says something like, hey, only available for this next little bit. But why, why would you say that? That's not true. You know, and it was like everything, everything was like that. And I immediately realized who I did not want to be my customer. It was guys like that, right? And I'm not trying to say like, hey, take this all in blind faith. And that's not what I was saying to my brother either. Um, and there's a time where I, I, I kind of, I wasn't trying to say that to people, but I got frustrated when it was like, just uh, just believe me, like this is <laughs> this is how it works, okay? I've built so many funnels now in my life, you know, for my age especially. It's like, come on, like, uh And and it was cool because my brother wasn't doing that. He was like, okay, that's awesome. Uh, what I want you to do is when you read the Expert Secrets book, if you have not gotten it already, or when you read Dotcom Secrets book, or when you're learning from any guru, as long as they're an actual guru, uh, or they really know what the heck they're talking about, um, what I want you to do is is don't decide whether or not you're going to do it right then. All I need you to do is decide, okay, I see that's a possibility. That's all you need to do, all right? Don't immediately decide whether or not it's a yes or a no or that's crap or that's cool, right? Don't, don't decide that. The only thing I need you to do and is sit back and go, that's possible and that's possible for me, right? 
because people go, oh, yeah, that's possible. But then they'll also go, well, that's possible, but only for that guy because he's in this certain position. He can only do this. Well, it's only possible for Steven because he's, he's podcasting like crazy and he's Russell's assistant. Like, no, that's not true at all. And so what I need you to do, what I need people to do and what I'm trying – I would love it if you guys would just do this and accept it that like – when I say something, it's for a reason. When I when when Russell says something, it's for a reason. When these things are published, a lot of times it's for a reason. But please don't discount things that you're learning from other people or gurus or people in the industry or whatever it is, just on the fact that you don't know if it's gonna work. It's like, well, you don't actually know if that's gonna work. It's like, actually, I do, and it has. And then I gotta spend all this time fighting whether or not they should actually do the thing that I'm telling them instead of them actually doing the thing. Does that make sense? And for some people, it becomes such a big, big pain in the butt that they end up having no more progress and it it stops them cold. And that's literally the reason why I stopped doing that book thing with that MLM was because that guy was there the whole time. And, and I mean, all the stuff I, I, we had like straight out scream sessions about it. I get passionate about this stuff because I know it works and and it has the power to change people's lives and, uh, in my own life and, and get products to people who need the product and, and you know what I mean? And so I get passionate about it. And, and I'm not saying take it on blind faith. I'm not saying to like jump right out with both feet all the time. But what I am asking is that you don't discount what things Russell is saying right off the bat. Don't make that your knee-jerk reaction, right? Remember in, uh, in the book um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, um, Robert Kiyosaki, right? He's, he's talking and, and he says in there – uh, it's a super famous quote. You guys are already going to know it before I finish it. But he basically says in there, like, um, poor people say, I can't afford that. Rich people say, how can I afford that? Right? And you don't need to be rich to apply that statement. Right? Remember, I got to Russell's first Funnel Hacking Live event. Actually, it's his second one. It's my first one. Um, I got to it with hardly any money because I asked, how can I afford that? And the way I was resourceful was by trading funnels to get to the event. I didn't even ask for money. I said, hey, I'll build you this funnel. Buy me a ticket to that event over there. And they're like, why? And I was like, because it's going to change my life. And they're like, okay, cool. And then I bought, I built another funnel. Hey, get me a hotel night for these nights. Why? I was like, because there's an event there and I want to go to it. Hey, get me a flight. That's literally how I got to Russell's first event, okay, because I had no money. And what I'm asking you to do is, is, is I had to break my mindset. Um, there's so many people where I've talked to them and they've been like, $100,000. Oh my gosh, that's so much money. And, and, and that's insurmountable, and I'm never gonna hit that. And if they already think that, then they're dang straight right. Shoot, you know, they're they're it's right, it's true. That's they're so true. They will go. They will go nowhere. They will go nowhere. Already, they're done. They're dead in the water. And and I get so sick thinking about. I'm like, gosh, I hope no one on my podcast thinks that about the things that that Russell publishes or that I publish or or people who are actual gurus publish. It's like, instead, change the mindset to think. Okay, that could be a possibility. I'm not asking you to say yes or no. I'm asking you to say, all right, all right, I could see that that could possibly work and I could see that that could possibly work for me, right? And then dive into the stuff. Then start being analytical about it. Then try, to, then try and judge it afterwards. And, and, and that way you're not fighting against a mind that's already said no, you know? Now you're just trying to educate your brain and make it, and make it work and make it happen, so... Anyways, guys, I hope that makes sense. Uh, the message that I'm trying to share here is uh, is that so many of you guys – the reason I think of why it, it spawned up is because when I was at Dan Henry's event, the AdCon event, I asked the question. I was like, how many of you guys would, are right now – I was like, it's okay. This is a safe environment. You know, um, Raise your hand right now if you're broke. And there was a lot of hands that rose. I was like, raise your hand if you're brand spanking new. And there was a lot of hands that rose. It's like, break, raise your hand if you feel like this is – been extremely exhausting and you just want to find the answer and a lot of hands went up at like most of the room on every one of those questions and I just in my mind was like ah yes that I'm not in that position anymore but I was and I know what that's like and it's sanctifying so rather than you try and run away from the pain and say that can't work that can't work that can't work right I've got some very close people to me who are like that and it drives me nuts Rather than do that, what I need you to do is turn your sail and you sail straight into the storm. You wade directly into the pain and you do it on purpose. And you say, I'm going to figure this crap out. I accept the state that I'm in. I'm not trying to choose whether or not on how I feel about it. It is what it is. And so I'm just going to push forward. I'm going to do it, right? And I do it. And you just 
You just do it. There's nothing else to it. It's actually really easy when you think about it. You just do it, right? And you think, hey, if this guy's saying it and he's got more money than I do, then he's probably right. That's what I'm asking you guys to do. Is when you get this Expert Secrets book, if you haven't gotten it already, get Expert Secrets or get Doc Up Secrets or whatever it is that you're trying to push forward and build your sales funnel around. Um, uh, turn into the pain if you're brand new. If you're experienced and you're crushing it, awesome. Continue to find the places. This is actually a concept that Tony Robbins teaches. When my wife came back from the Tony Robbins event that she just went to, she's gone for three or four days. And she came back and she said, honestly, one of the best, coolest things that he taught me was that I need to turn into the pain. People will avoid pain, but you actually don't end up avoiding it. You actually only end up prolonging the pain. And and instead, the fastest way towards pleasure is really just toward, is is seriously turn into the pain. Accept the pain, walk directly through it, whatever it is that sucks. If it's a relationship that needs to be fixed, if it's something in your business that needs to be fixed, if you currently are not making a decision and actually making offers and trying to get people's credit card numbers right there's a lot of people i was in that category for a little while that was my that was the one for me i just realized i wasn't asking people for money (laughs) just so stupid i say it now but you guys are doing that because i did that we all have done that before and so all i'm asking you guys to do is to and i hope you guys you feel me do you guys get this you understand this because if you can seriously just accept the fact that you are not where you want to be and, and, and that people are trying to teach you and there's more than enough information that's out there, what really is the problem then? Why have you actually not hit the goal? The goal has not been hit because you're not choosing to hit it. That means you need to say no to some things as far as opportunities go, but it also means you need to be dang humble and realize you don't know it all, right? And when I personally started doing that and I made an offer and I stopped offering single products, that's when it all blew up for me. And it took, it's a serious humble pie. It's a serious piece of humble slice, you know, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. It sucks too. Whenever humble pie comes along, it doesn't just come in the slice, it comes in the whole pie and it hits you right in the face. And you're like, crap, you know, don't take yourself too serious. Have fun with it. Accept the fact that you are in a position that you need to be in to grow. And if you turn into it and wade through it, you'll learn the lessons faster, you'll get through the pain faster, and you'll get the pleasure way faster as well, which is awesome. And that's totally what it's been. Super cool. Uh, you guys know that for a while, like I was at this $1,000 a week level, which is awesome. <laughs> the last two weeks in a row has been $2,000 a week. It's just going up. And, and what I've been doing is working, and it's been really, really exciting. Uh, um, I'm not making millions yet, but I know I will. And, uh, and there's no, there's no problem. I accept the fact that I'm in this state. I'm not trying to hide it. I'm not trying to BS anyone or say that I'm making millions. This is exactly where I am. And I'm going to enjoy the lessons that are in the stage that I'm in. And, and that's all I'm trying to tell you guys. And, and that's what I was trying to do with my brothers also. Just have fun with where I am. Enjoy now. Don't be so far future focused that you actually miss what's going on right now. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Uh, it's kind of a long podcast again. I, I'm getting long-winded on some of these podcasts, guys. A lot of you guys, I've had some of you guys reach out to me and you're like, man, I love the length, like 12 to 15 minutes. That's perfect. And I was like, oh, that's cool. It's good feedback. Good to know. Um, I'm not trying to be long-winded. I just want you guys to know, like, there's so much to this and 90% of it is your own psychological state, <laughs> okay? There's more than enough information out there. There's more than enough out there for your product to be created. There's more than enough for it to be completely automated for you to do this on the side of your actual job. What's stopping you is you, you know? And, and, and it's hard to hear that. And it was hard for me to realize it about myself. And, um, you know, way back in the day. And when I actually accepted that and got over it, things happened. So anyways, guys, hey, I hope you guys are doing awesome. Get out there and crush it. Um, uh, make a decision on one offer, one pro, you know, one, one offer, one business. Don't worry about anything else. Kill everything else and just do one. Launch it, launch it, launch it. Get people out there. Put your offer in front of as many people as you can. And uh, that's the fastest way to you actually get money that I know of. They'll try and do 100 things. You'll kill it. Uh, you mean you'll kill yourself. <laughs> All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks for listening to Sales Funnel Radio. Please remember to subscribe and leave feedback. Want to get one of today's best internet sales funnel for free? Go to salesfunnelbroker.com slash free funnels to download your pre-built sales funnel today.